This is the Canon 80D. It came out in early 2016. I actually bought one of these cameras in early 2017. It was the first camera that I used professionally. It was the first one that I bought when I wanted to go out and actually do professional photo shoots and video shoots. And I did a lot of stuff on one of these cameras. So how does something like this hold up in 2022? Is this still worth considering? We did a video earlier in the week, you might've seen it, all about how are older cameras still relevant in 2022? Well, let's be a bit more specific. Let's do a review of the Canon 80D, but from the perspective of now, 2022, and how does it hold up? Well, obviously, first of all, that's not fair in the slightest. This didn't come out in 2022, and if this came out today as it is now, there's no way that we'd be giving this a favourable review just because it doesn't have the modern technology that you would expect if it came out now. So it's not really a fair thing to give this a review as if it came out now. But the question, is it still relevant in 2022? Well, that, that is a little bit more interesting. You know what's fun as well that I've noticed? Holding a DSLR, these are whew, chunky in a good way. These are built like a tank. And actually, it's been a while since I've properly gone out and shot with a DSLR. So, okay, ATD, there's a lot of things it doesn't have, which you would probably expect now from a camera in 2022. So things like image stabilization, it doesn't have you know any 4K video shooting, but it does have some technology, which to be honest, keeps it pretty relevant even now. 24 megapixels, APS-C sensor. So you get a crop sensor, that's, neither a positive or a negative, I don't think, to be honest, it's just a different type of sensor to full frame. I used to think of it as more of a negative, but to be honest, if you're shooting wildlife or you're shooting where you want a long focal range, APS-C is way more useful than full frame. If you are shooting video, APS-C is often way more useful as well because you don't have to deal with quite such an aggressive shallow depth of field, which you might get on full frame. The image quality from this still holds up really well. It's really, really sharp and beautiful. And the colors are fantastic, as you'd expect from Canon. It looks great. There's enough resolution there to crop a little bit as well. You know, I'm shooting on my Sony a7 III and it's basically the same kind of megapixel count. Now, of course, that that's not to say that this camera holds up perfectly image quality wise. Things like ISO values, I find with this, you know, I'd forgotten, but you can't really bump them up as high as you can with a modern camera. Let's compare it to something like the EOS R, which came out a few years ago. That camera is phenomenal with higher ISO values. This one, not so much. It's gonna introduce noise much earlier and it's gonna be a little bit more of a, of a of a ruining photo kind of time. But outside of that, if you can light your situation properly or you can take advantage of natural light in the right kind of way, or maybe you just change the way you take the photo so that you don't have to deal with bumping up that ISO, this really, really holds up image quality wise. And then you've got autofocus, right? Something that you would probably expect has come on leaps and bounds. And it has, obviously. I'm not gonna pretend from 2016 to 2022 Autofocus has gone crazy, and I now really, really trust my autofocus for video, for photo, all the time, all the time. But you know what? This holds up so much better than you'd think. This has dual pixel AF, and actually using the flip out screen, which by the way, I love, and the touch screen part of that, whether you're shooting photo or video, it is so easy to adjust your focus point and the camera does a great job of focusing. Now we'll come on to video in a second, but I do wanna just stick on photo for a moment. You've got this nice LCD screen on the top here, so you can use this without the actual LCD screen at the back if you want to for stills. You've got all kinds of controls, which are great. It's very, very straightforward and easy to use for photo in particular, I find. You know, drive, ISO, you've got the mode switcher here. On the back, there is no joystick, which is weird to me, but it's only weird to me because I'm coming from 2022 where I'm so used to joysticks. And obviously that didn't bother me when I owned this camera. So I don't see why it should bother me now. You've still got things like the D-pad, you've got a scroll wheel, you've got a wheel up here, and the menus are really easy to use as well. Just a note on the body as well, just for a second. This is really built like a tank. You know, this really feels like it can take some punishment, which is something I've missed a little bit from DSLRs. The flip out screen, still reasonably chunky as well, which I like. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break off. And you know, it does flip all the way around as well. So you can take selfies or of course do vlogging. Now, speaking of video, this of course does not have 4K video, right? Uh, even at the time it came out, this was kind of a mid range DSLR. So even then, there's no way it would have 4K. But I don't know that you need 4K. I shoot in 4K, I shoot everything in 4K now. But realistically, most people watch back your content on a phone or they might watch it on their computer. That would be probably be 1080p. They might watch it on their TV, but probably the majority of people are watching it 
in 1080p. And actually, the 1080p footage from this camera does look really nice. You've got 1080p up to 60 frames a second as well, which is great. So you've got a little bit of slow motion there. Yes, I am very used to 120 frames a second now for my slow motion. Yes, I'm very used to 4K. But to be honest with you, if you don't mind about 4K, this is still a really, really decent video camera. And actually, the autofocus for video, the continuous autofocus, works exceptionally well. And that is something, considering that this came out in 2016. Yeah, that was the time when a lot of people shooting video would only use manual focus because they just couldn't trust the autofocus on the camera. Now, like I say, there are things missing, you know, no image stabilization, but otherwise, connection-wise, you're not doing too bad, right? You've got mic in, you've got headphone out, you've got a micro USB to actually connect it to your computer. You have got HDMI out. It's mini HDMI, but that's pretty much to be expected. It's a single card slot, but like I said, it was a, a mid-range DSLR when it came out. You know, you were probably looking at something like the Canon 5D Mark IV for that kind of high-end professional system. So I understand why this just has the one card slot. Otherwise, if you're familiar with Canon, you're gonna be right at home here. You know, it feels good in the hand, it's extremely comfortable. It pairs well with pretty much all the EF lenses in terms of weight and balance and stuff like that. I've used this for a variety of different things. I've shot promo videos on it. I've shot photo shoots. I've shot corporate headshots. I've even shot events with it. And it is a very, very adaptable camera. Honestly, if I had to shoot an event or something like that, and this was the only camera available to me, I would feel at home using this camera. Yes, there's some limitations, image stabilization, not being able to use a crazy high ISO. But those are things that, you know, I sometimes think, especially the ISO thing, right? It almost feels a little bit lazy sometimes. When I'm blasting out a shot at 10,000 ISO, not worrying too much about the noise, maybe I should be considering the light a little bit more. Maybe I should be moving or changing something or doing something differently to not have to shoot at that kind of ISO. You can't always change it. You can't always do anything about it. but. Sometimes I do feel like, you know, the times when we couldn't just blast the ISO up to some ridiculous number probably makes you a little bit of a better photographer. If you're looking for a new camera, and by new I mean used, then this is absolutely a great shout. Hybrid shooters, still shooters, or video shooters, if you don't care about 4K, this is going to be a great, great system to check out. And anyone who's looking to get into photography or video, and wants a good camera without necessarily breaking the bank, this is fantastic. Plus, there are so many lenses available for this camera, it is crazy. Yes, it's APS-C, but you're just gonna get a bit more reach, right? When you go and shoot the birds, or you go and do something like that, or sports, or whatever it is, you're gonna be glad you've got that extra reach. Sure, it means that, you know, a 16 mil isn't quite a 16 mil, but that's how the world works. If you wanna check out a camera like this, you can check out our used department. I'll pop a link down in the description so you can go see all of that. But otherwise, whew, I'll tell you what, this has been a fun one. Going back and revisiting something like this, I use a lot of new tech, but, uh, it's lovely to see how well some of this holds up. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video because there's new content all the time. I'll be seeing you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.